Hello. I'm going to speak a little bit about the current feeding of a public cloud service uh, on OpenStack. Uh, ah, sorry, the tape. <laughs> Uh, basically, we're in, uh, doing a public OpenStack cloud, an infrastructure as a service. Uh, we have multiple public cloud sites, uh, eight of them in six different uh, countries. Uh, we also do something called compliant cloud, that is for businesses with special cloud re requirements, for example, financial services or um, uh, healthcare. Uh, also, a number of private clouds that uh, are basically uh, set up pretty much the same way as the public clouds, but uh, done a little bit uh, differently due to the, the fact that they are customer-specific. Uh, most of the things we build are built on standard OpenStack services. We try to stay vendor-independent and not do very much specialization as far as possible. Uh, a brief history. Uh, we started back in 2009. Uh, what we did was basically a non-OpenStack-based KVM solution, uh, and we found it to be lacking in multiple ways, uh, all, all, both in features uh, that didn't have all the features we wanted, as well as the development rate wasn't really very good. So we started looking at alternatives in 2012, and uh, our first test installation uh, was based on Havana, and it was done in 2013. And we la launched the OpenStack-based service publicly in 2014, and it's based on IceHouse. So we've been doing this for, for some time. We do regular upgrades. Uh, we do release upgrades at the time. And our current situation is Mitaka, Newton, or Okata, depending on where in the upgrade cycle the specific uh, uh, site or uh, private cloud or so on is in. Uh, also, there are multiple data centers. Uh, it's basically 10 data centers with OpenStack installations. And we have 10 gigabit connections between sites in a redundant way. And do transport VLANs through an overlay on PLS network over the, the core IP network. We started out with one keystone uh, and multiple regions based on that keystone. We're now working on separating and distributing keystones to uh, both to get better performance uh, as well as bet better redundance, as well as there might be different um, compliance requirements depending on which country the installation is in and so on. We have written some own code, code to uh, be able to move virtual machine snapshots between regions. Uh, this code is pretty specialized, unfortunately, so we haven't been able to commit it upstream, but that's something we're, we might do later on. Uh, the hardware we use for this setup is uh, mostly based on Dell uh, when it comes to uh, servers. Uh, some Dell Force 10 uh, network equipment to uh, do the internal networking in OpenStack and so on and Cisco equipment for core networking. Uh, we use uh, mostly M1000E uh, blade chassis to, uh, and try to cram as much as possible into them. But uh, we also have some non-blades for features like uh, storage and stuff like that. All the hardware is deployed through MAAS nowadays. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into that a bit later. We have gone through a different number of uh, a number of different platforms. Uh, we started out with CentOS doing manual installations. Uh, that was pretty bad to maintain and uh, also very hard to do new installations. Uh, so we pretty quickly moved on to CentOS and did uh, our own scripts for deployments. Uh, that also required pretty much uh, uh, manual work. So. We tried to standardize on Ansible, and at that time, OpenStack Ansible didn't have uh, really good support for CentOS. Nowadays, we've, we have seen that it's much better. But at that time, we created our own Ansible playbooks, and we did that pretty much based on the scripts we used to deploy it uh, previously. So we didn't do it in a very generic way, more in a, a way that worked for us, basically. 
After that, we looked at a number of different technologies to deploy OpenStack. We looked at Red Hat Director based uh, deployments. Uh, we looked at Red Hat with our own playbooks. We looked at Ubuntu with uh, Autopilot, Ubuntu with UU. But we ended up uh, going with um, uh, Canonical uh, MAAS to deploy hardware, Ubuntu as operating system, and doing standard OpenStack Ansible installations, as that gave us the flexibility we wanted in, in the best way we found. Uh, when it comes to vendor support, we have found it quite hard to find uh, really useful support for us, uh, for our use case. It has also been pretty time consuming to get support. Even the simplest question, for example, asking when is this specific bug that we know we're getting impacted with, when it's going to be fixed? Okay, at that time you have to provide all kinds of the information, provide log files, provide every bit of information that you can think of instead of just getting a simple answer, okay, it's gonna be fixed in release, this release. Uh, we have also found sometimes uh, that uh, vendors have difficult requirements to provide support that has been uh, difficult for us to, to adhere to. For example, that things have to be set up in a very specific way or that you can't do custom modifications or, and so on. Uh, usually we have found that we, we find fixes uh, long before the vendor support has uh, when they have requested uh, multiple pieces of information from us and so on. Uh, usually sometime in that analysis phase, we have already found a fix by ourselves. Uh, when it comes to storage, uh, we have st historically used uh, very much uh, Solaris, ZFS and NFS based uh, storage for our older cloud uh, service. Also, uh, some of our first installations of uh, uh, OpenStack used that same uh, storage as we already were knowledgeable about it and so on. Uh, Performance-wise, this has, has been really good, but it has had some issues with scalability and redundancy that we really want, wanted to address. We tested a number of technologies uh, during all this time. We had some brief encounters with uh, Equalogic. We have some, had some uh, Gluster uh, encounters, and finally we uh, ended up with uh, just doing plain Ceph, and uh, we have never looked back. Uh, when it came to networking, uh, we found that to be one of the more complex challenges. Uh, lots of choices, uh, lots of issues, especially from the beginning when uh, it was quite new technology to us. Uh, both issues when doing upgrades and the performance issues and uh, stability issues. Uh, even though we, we uh, decided on going uh, on the standard components in this case as well. Uh, we had the choice of going with vendor, uh, vendor uh, solutions. We tried to stay as vendor independent as possible, so we just went with the Neutron and Open vSwitch, and that has really actually worked pretty well. Uh, and it has been huge improvements in Savannah. Uh, that was <laughs> our start, start. So nowadays uh, we find it to work really well and stable. And lots of work has been done with, uh, for example, uh, upgrades um, and, uh, and not getting data plane interruptions while, while doing upgrades and so on. Uh, when it comes to billing, we have used, uh, we started to use Solometer. We had lots of issues there, uh, both performance and reliability and some customer unhappiness due to that. And we've heard that lots of other providers have had uh, similar uh, problems and experiences with, with this. Uh, basically, we ended up doing, writing our own hacks to do telemetry and uh, to get out the data we wanted. But it looks more promising today and we are, we're trying to, um, uh, looking into um, uh, getting using the more standard ways uh, of doing uh, telemetry as there have been quite some developments there since, since we uh, did our own uh, uh, development there. Uh, when it comes to upgrades, uh, we're currently doing release upgrades during service windows that, that allows us to have some downtime, uh, but we try to do them uh, without downtime. Uh, we have found though that most issues we encounter in between those upgrades already has fixes committed in later versions that we, than uh, the one we run at the moment. 
So we cherry pick smaller fixes in between release upgrades and uh, get those in uh, even, even between um, those release upgrades. Uh, and we're moving more towards a more continuous upgrade strategy to be able to um, uh, meet these requirements better. Just some quicks. I'm actually running out of time here. So when it comes to test environments, they're needed for many purposes, and you're going to need lots of them to be able to... Uh, to uh, and uh, So it's easy, important to easily set up new ones and be able to do that quickly to be able to both develop new features, test, uh, test new features, and uh, test upgrades and so on, as well as uh, uh, working on... Uh, uh, troubleshooting uh, issues and uh, testing fixes for those. Uh, when it comes to customer interface, we expose the OpenStack API to customers. Uh, we also needed an easy-to-use control panel uh, that supported some customer features that we needed that are not uh, in, for example, Horizon. And we needed to support some non-OpenStack services that we provide as well. So it, we ended up creating our own uh, control panel for that. And when it com comes to the API and coding against them, we found it to sometimes lack documentation, and documentation uh, was sometimes not up to date and, uh, or uh, wrong. Uh, but this has improved over time, and it's also the beauty of open source. You can also always go back to the source and actually check out how things actually work. And when it comes to the last one, supporting this, uh, uh, this thing, we have a large variation among customer knowledge. So the first line support is basically, OK, they take the call or uh, they take it from the beginning and uh, uh, start looking at the issue and can help with billing issues and, uh, and uh, uh, usage is issues and so on. And then we have the second line that do, does more thorough uh, uh, troubleshooting and can also acquire the help of the DevOps team to um, troubleshoot harder problems. And the DevOps team, of course, handles everything basically that has to, um, uh, that requires modifications of the OpenStack environment. I mean, for example, code changes or configuration changes and harder troubleshooting. And that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>